Hello and welcome to another episode of Reseller Information Network. We are on episode 64. We've about reached that golden age. You know, we're, we're getting up into senior citizenship. Uh, we're kind of moving up in the ranks. And hey, I've heard from other people that typically podcasts don't even last more than like 10 episodes. Uh, good thing we're not a podcast, so we stuck around quite a bit longer than that. <laughs> so, we just call it a show. We're not the hipsters with the podcast names, but uh, we we do appreciate you guys for joining us and sticking around. We especially appreciate all you guys who leave us comments and suggestions because we love to hear from you guys so we know kind of where to go uh, as far as the direction of the show if you have any questions for us, if you have any comments about maybe some things that you would like to see in the future, uh, we do appreciate those. I'm going to go ahead and read a few that we got this past week. And we do appreciate you guys who watched. If you haven't watched and you don't know what $1,000 t-shirts look like, you need to go back and watch last week's episode. Um, when you look at Ozark treasure hunters said i owned a sign shop and my wife was a bartender her business closed down during the pandemic i bought a storage unit that had dozens of high-end teas and it i had no idea but i asked her instead of going back to bartending to sell the stuff on ebay sold a pink floyd t-shirt in less than 10 minutes listed for a hundred dollars nice. <laughs> hundred and some dollars no idea what it's worth but I closed my sign shop down and went to full-time reselling. There you go. And also he said that he's been on eBay since 94 and she had never listed anything before that we went to New York that same summer and told my, told my uncle the story. He said that he had, um, what's an original Woodstock t-shirt work. And the one I, when I saw how to sold comp for 6,500, he said, at least I got to touch it and the program from the concert. Wow. That's crazy. So, uh, uh, Geller K Yahoo, Geller K Yahoo, Yahoo. Okay. I stay away from clothes as much as possible, but I did find an awesome find a few years ago. I found a long sleeve concert shirt for Dio for the last tour that Ronnie James Dio was in, I held it for quite a while, but I knew it was worth it. I sold it for $249 plus priority shipping. I got it at a yard sale for a dollar. One of the things I love is that since I'm a very early level Gen Xer, I don't have to research these people or bands. I just remember what was popular. This is one of the few times that that worked in her favor. Um, <laughs> Tim, here you go. Trash Cast Rescue says, Tim, listen, you're the only one I can see doing bullfighting. So I think that makes you all even. <laughs> Talking about the cowboy reference a couple of weeks ago. That's good, Tim. Uh, so I've, I've, I've been to a bullfight before. Have any of you guys ever been to a real life bullfight? A bullfight? Yeah, I was in, uh, I was in uh, Madrid and I went to a bullfight in Madrid. I've been to a rodeo and I've seen bulls like sling clowns around the uh, ring. Yeah, see, no, listen, like I said, I could be a cowboy, right? And when I talked to, I meant like cowboy, like on the farm, cowboy life, like on the range, you know, maybe, on the maybe range. some roping and yeah, some yeah. horse riding, and you know, but mostly like sitting underneath the tree and in the sunset, like looking like a cool cowboy. But rodeoing? Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna leave that up to Leroy, Sarnock, and Eric. Yeah, I've been to radios. I, I prefer being in the crowd than being in the. I have been in a radio parade before, because uh, my granddad used to take us in his horse-drawn cart. Uh, we would ride in the radio parade. So I've been there. Had the cowboy boots and the hat back in the day. So you had to fit in there. But hey, we do appreciate you guys' comments. So we do want to also give some thanks and love to some other folks. We got Tim uh, get his vocal cords kind of wound up a little bit, a little bit, and we we'll get him moved over here. Get a little stretch in, maybe a little drink in, because you know what? We do thank you guys so much. In case you guys didn't know, too, as a channel member, we've actually started giving you early access to our latest episodes. So 
be on the lookout when you get that notification. Make sure you got the bell set and you guys can watch it before anybody else, even us at times. <laughs> Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our channel members, AZ Katsu, Simply Shenanigans, Diane Matthews, our very own Blood, Sweat, and Cell, Trash Cat Rescue, New England Betty Boo, Joe Deals, Old School Picker, Vintage Sport Clips, Charities, Terrific Lines, Kathleen Wilford, Wade Flipper, Ohio Pickers, Comet Hand, Frank Rudy, Retro, Absolute Fines, Des Marty, Heather Pedler, James Steinbreaker, Old Pass, High Plains Flipper, Walter Tilton, Black Sheep Society, Jeff Wild Picker, Mark Rowland, Tracer Jay's Trading, Aaron Vaughn, Central High Wall Picker, and w -w 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 Wiggle Room 9. That was there's a lot of saliva almost coming out during portions of that. It's like <laughs> still in my mouth. I was I was running out of, I was running out of breath just watching you. He was he was trying to trying to go ahead and emulate a cowboy, give a little spit off to the side. You just need a bucket off to the side. One of those uh, brass spittoons, give a little patine. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things. Hey, so today we do have something, you know, kind of returning to the roots just a little bit. We've got a few episode uh, segments for you guys today. We definitely want you guys to stick around. You will not want to miss. Hey, we're coming with Tool Talk later in the show. A little Tool Talk. You know, we have we have a resident expert here. You guys know. Uh, we know him as the jack of all trades, but we know that he actually is a tool guy as well. <laughs> so yeah, Leroy is going to be sharing with us a little bit later about that. Uh, Sarnak's going to bring a little bit more in the trending department. Him and Tim will share about some things to be on the lookout. So, But right now, we do have a little bit of breaking news for you, folks. <laughs> I do want to share a couple things on the breaking news front. Uh, first of all, breaking news for us here at the Reseller Information Network. If you don't know or haven't heard by now, we do have One Stop Shop, which is a marketplace curated and actually kind of by the people in our circle, essentially, the people that know Reseller Information Network that have come in and have become sellers in that marketplace, have also become purchasers in that marketplace. And then us, as the four of us, we are in there working, hanging out, trying to help grow that, that season. So we do have slots available for people if they would like to become live sellers. So if you would like to do that, just drop it in the chat and uh, we will make sure we get you onboarded and get you in there to do it. So basically, hey guys, we're hiring on the marketplace. <laughs> Come on in and <laughs> you can sell something. Uh, the other thing that probably pertains to more of you, the guys than that, is let's talk a little bit about eBay shipping. There's been an update to the shipping program. And, you know, guys, like, hey, let's kind of go around the horn a little bit. What have you noticed with this new update? I know we all have a different way that we do things, but uh, I wanted to ask kind of around the horn. So, sir, not like if you could. A, kind of let people know what the new shipping update that you've seen on eBay and what are you seeing with it? Well, the good thing is what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a drop in prices, especially on priority mail because I they've definitely been tinkering with this cal uh, the uh, cubic rate stuff. Forever, people have been like, oh, eBay needs to be cubic rate. And I finally feel like they're implementing it because I've definitely seen costs come down as well um so it's been really nice like i tell you what anything close to me like shoes two pound pair of shoes anything close to me all the way up to like new york new jersey seven bucks flat up straight up seven dollars the other day i sold something even i was just going up in pennsylvania 
But I mean, that was like six seventy five. I was like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. I'm like, I'm like looking. I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> this is this is right for priority mail. So um, yeah, definitely the prices are coming down on that. Another thing too, I've seen because a lot of people have gotten used to this ground advantage uh, type thing. Um, you know, using it for like their smaller items. But I have actually seen now listen, if your item is over a pound, check priority mail versus ground advantage because I've seen a lot of times where like with this new uh this these new rates, you know, things are coming up seven dollars uh priority mail and they're like eight twenty five ground advantage. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, wow, priority mail is is the way to go and you can order free boxes from the post office to send it priority mail so yeah. it's kind of like why would you you know take advantage of both worlds cheaper price and free packaging so it's a win-win for everybody so if you're take if you're if you're if you're selling like we are take a look at the shipping um you know what i what i've kind of been doing too is i've been putting everything on ebay underground advantage Okay, just to just be like, all right, if this sells, I have an option of ground advantage because I'm on the East Coast. Some things that go to the West Coast are a little expensive. <laughs> so taking those items and shipping them ground advantage versus priority, if I'm going to California, it'll be cheaper going ground advantage. But if I'm going more like closer, like East Coast, I'm definitely checking the priority mail. So I'm listing everything as ground advantage. But if I see that it's cheaper, I I literally upgrade them to priority mail, which is just in the end taking care of your customer even more. You're gonna get the item, they're gonna get the item faster. And you you y'all know, you know, when people have get their item quick, they're a lot happier rather than waiting, 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 and then you never want that, where's my you know, you never want to have that question come up to your 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 person like where's my package? If you can avoid that, like, hey, where's my package? Or have you shipped this out yet? Now we get the ridiculous ones. But if you're doing those things and taking a look at ground advantage, priority mail, and sending it out, you're going to have happy customers. So, yeah, that's exciting news coming from, you know, uh, the post office and eBay. Leroy, I know, um, like, there's also a box situation if you upgrade to priority, right? Leroy. 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 Oh. I, I was, I no, you said box situation. I thought you were talking to me. I thought you were talking to Sonak stuff. So guys, so check this out. Okay, so we're gonna. This is tool talk. Okay, but I wanted to go after Sonak because I want to blend this in. I always get, oh, well, tools are heavy, and I can't sell tools because they weigh too much. No. No, you have to understand, I have this pair of pliers here, okay? It's Craftsman, okay, a nice brand. Guys, this is under a pound, so it goes in a poly mailer. I put it in I put it in a foam wrap or bubble wrap. I put it with saran wrap, and I put it in a, in a bubble mailer. So just because you say the word tools, it doesn't spell heavy, okay? It doesn't have to be heavy. I have thousands of items and it's all smalls. So when I say tools, it doesn't mean it has to be this drill. Uh-huh. But, but this drill, you take the bit off, you take the battery off. Sometimes you can buy them just like this. Guess where this fits? Right in a pad of flat roof. What bubble wrap? I put bubble wrap around it. I just bubble wrap it to I can't only can't fit it to the mail or two bubble mails, but don't say that. Um, so you have to understand just because it's tools, it doesn't mean it's a heavy item. And even if you didn't send this in, if you didn't send this in um the poly mail, it still only weighs about four pounds. Let's see, I'm gonna put it on the scale, and the scale says. Two pounds. It's two pounds. So, you know, stop being afraid of tools. You got this hammer here, okay? 
I fit this hammer in this bag. Wait, how much did you pay for that envelope, Leroy? How much did I pay for this envelope? Yeah, yeah. Um, a free ninety nine. Oh, wait a minute! You can get free shipping supplies to ship stuff if you ship priority. Shipping supplies, and you can ship tools in them. Okay, <laughs> like, like you, you guys have to. Really, I don't use many. I've been using a lot of boxes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna copycat off of somebody else that I heard. I it's probably all over there. Tim had mentioned it. I noticed I haven't been selling a lot of my first class stuff. And I'm not selling my first class stuff because I feel like what I heard was true is if you didn't switch it over in bulk on eBay, it's sitting over there and it has no shipper. There's no shipper. It There is no first class anymore. So you guys need attention and take Take a look at your items. If when you redo your, I redo my items every day. So every day I take twenty items or ten items, and I go through them. Anything that I know is under a pound now, I have to go in. It takes it takes it probably an hour out of my day now. I got to go in and I got to I got to drop down drop down um my drop down my um to fix my item, edit my item, and then I got to make sure I add the shipping in. Because right now, on my end, the way I have my store set up, my stuff that is still, that hasn't been listed, that's been listed since they that stuff is not selling. Because it doesn't have, it, and nobody's telling you this. Um, Tim, you had mentioned it because it was mentioned on a, on a podcast, and that's where I heard it from. Um, so, you know... Pay attention to your shipping. Like Sirlock said, guys, you got to make sure that when you do shipping, you check your priority or check your flat rate. I mean, your uh, advantage. So these these are um, these for me now are eight seventy five. I think eight seventy four. Um, I was paying eight thirty, um, and now some stuff. If I'm only shipping it. To a state or two near me, it is actually cheaper to go with ground advantage. So you shouldn't do this, guys. All I'm going to say is for some reason, this polymailer hides that polymailer. I don't know if it really does. I'm not telling you. Just the way that I hold it up, see if I go like this. Wow. And then they go like this, disappear. So, you know, um, if I got to ship my hammer and it's only going to to uh, down the street, I don't know. It, it, it had writing on it. Anyway, you guys got to realize, please, I'm so sick of hearing people say, tools are too heavy. Tools are too heavy. No, they're not. They're not if you buy the tool. Uh, sell hand tools, but I can sell, sell some used items. I mean, some power tools, and it still fits in a poly mailer. So make sure that you guys pay attention. Make sure you guys check your first class. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, check your first class because my sales were dogged, and now they're coming back up again. So check your first class. Tools are not too heavy, and I'm done. I'm going on and on. <laughs> Leroy, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> check your first class. Yeah, for sure. It, it's good. I actually was in there doing it while you were talking because I was like, have I checked my first class? <laughs> like, I actually, I, you can run up on stuff that's that way. And, you know, the, the thing that he's talking about is it, shipping, shipping changes all the time. I mean, you will hear people ranting about it. USPS is going out. Of, you won't be able to ship anything anymore with USPS. Like they're changing, you know, all the stuff, the sky's falling every day, but we, we, we're all about adapt adapting here. We're all about like, Hey, there's always a better mousetrap. Sometimes you may have to use some different bait or something. Yes. <laughs> That's there. There's always some way to do it. So we did have a, another segment we want to talk about and it. It is trending and, 
I'm going to let Tim and, and Cernak tag team on this a little bit because I know from entirely different perspectives as far as things that are trending aren't always just about events, but and they're also not always just about like what you see the masses are trending in. You see trends within certain marketplaces. So uh, we'll let these guys share a little bit about it. So I know like you're going to hear Tim say these things repeatedly from now till whenever, uh, but we know there is a particular event that does cause some trending, especially if you guys are not subscribed. Tim also has among his many hats, he has a whole YouTube get it, get it dedicated to the sports card industry and memorabilia. And also, man, he, uh, if you watch us on Tuesdays, you can get a behind the scenes look of the latest video. Just go back and watch the replay this past Tuesday. Uh, we, we actually do a full breakdown about Tim's channel and uh, we, we go in and talk, <laughs> talk about that stuff. So go back and watch the video that is dropping uh, that's already live on Tuesday's listing and loafing and, and be, be on the lookout, get a behind the scenes look of uh, Tim in action. So, Tim, what's, what's the trending out there in the world of sports? I, I just got a, a breaking news uh, a couple of minutes ago. De de devastating news. So the Washington Commanders, okay, are in the process of hiring a new head coach. And the guy that everybody really wanted and most people thought was going to be the head coach was Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. Uh, but breaking news, he just informed Seattle and Washington that he is no longer accepting a head coaching job and will remain in Detroit as the offensive coordinator. So my phone is currently going bananas, and uh, people are pretty uh, upset about that. But as far as football goes, we are approaching the Super Bowl here, ladies and gentlemen. So we will have a week between the last games and um, – the upcoming uh, actual Super Bowl, there's a, a gap between that. So it's really perfect for resellers uh, to kind of like spend a little bit of time gathering up all their San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City stuff. Uh, I told people to start doing that when the playoffs started to kind of kind of have like a pool of, of all the teams that made the playoffs so that you're prepared for whichever two teams make it in the end. Um, I will tell you that Obviously, Travis Kelsey stuff is through the roof. Now, some people may disagree with this tactic, but I will tell you that I have already done it and have already made a sale, and I do not feel ashamed about it. Um, I will list anything Travis Kelsey or Kansas City Chiefs. I will put Taylor Swift in the title. Okay? So, you know, it, it's just – it. you know, some people may say that's not – a good idea, but I mean, it, listen, I it sells right now. Travis Kelsey, anything Travis Kelsey will sell. It, the Kansas City Chiefs stuff will sell too. Uh, Taylor Swift stuff will sell as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anything from the small, uh, you know, items like a, co a coffee mug, you know, to a starter jacket, to sports cards, all that stuff. Now, you know, especially with like player specific items, you want to make sure you have that stuff listed. And list it a little bit higher, right? Just a little bit higher because in the heat of the moment, and I've done this for the last three Super Bowls, I have sold cards of players that have made a big play or caught a touchdown pass during the game. They will sell because people who are looking for deals, they're, they're like, oh, because they know that afterwards all that stuff, the price is going to go up. So people are looking to buy that stuff and flip it so they're looking and, and searching during the game. Like real hardcore flippers are looking <laughs> and searching what they can buy during the game to sell for a higher price after the game. So just be aware of that. You know, have all that stuff. You have a week before the Super Bowl. Um, some people will actually run auctions and time it to end like during the Super Bowl. Now, there is a lot of risk in that, but there can also be a lot of reward. I have seen – People who have become extremely lucky and had auctions end at the right time during sporting events and have made 10, 20, 30x 
what that item actually is going to sell for the next within the next 24 hours. So, you know, you are, it is a risk reward, but if you have pennies on the dollar in on it, 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 it might be worth it to kind of just test the waters and see what you can get uh, in that market. But definitely a, a lot of opportunity here for, for us as resellers uh, for the Super Bowl. You know, and then pay attention to, we talk about this. It's not just in sports, but it's in everything. Trending is, is a real life thing, especially in today's society where you have like social media. Pay attention. The commercials have been so bad over the last, like, I feel like five years, maybe 10. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you guys have, I remember when Super Bowl commercials were like the, the big deal. Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. pay attention to Super Bowl commercials because there may be products or something that somebody's wearing or something like that that happens during the Super Bowl that may take off immediately. And also what you want to be careful of too is, is you want to cross-reference anything that may change dramatically market-wise uh, that you already have listed. Because what happens is, is if you might have something listed for dirt cheap and then all of a sudden all that stuff is selling and you're like, damn, this thing has been sitting here for this long. And the next thing you know, all that stuff is selling for two times the money, but you're sold on the cheap end because, you know, you weren't paying attention. Now, don't – this other thing, too, is you don't want to outprice yourself out of the market either. So don't try and get greedy and list something for, like, 10x because then it's just going to sit there and you're not going to be able to capitalize on the momentum swing. So find that sweet spot in the market between low end and high end – uh, as far as your pricing goes and try and make make a move in between the middle because you do want to take advantage of it. You don't want to be taken advantage of, but you also don't want to be left holding the bag and not selling it at all. I hope all that made sense. It was a lot. I'm sorry. I apologize. So I'll say like, you know, I was thinking as you were talking to like even like halftime performers and that kind of stuff, anybody that's, you know, kind of, it's a big deal. Like the Super Bowl is a big deal. A lot of people watch that game that don't watch anything else. And I know people that just watch the halftime show, to be honest. Like I'm hanging out, waiting for the halftime show, see what happens. So you never know. Like, yeah, if you have Reba. Well, I should. It, yeah, it's funny you say that. I was going through my listings going, all right, do I have any 49er stuff? And I look at my souls going, and then I'm like, do I have any cheap stuff? I'm like, yeah, I think I got a few chiefs out. Nope, all sold. But I do, t you brought up something interesting. I do have a 2004 Usher World Tour shirt. Oh, see, God, this is why I knew, sir. I knew. Super, man. What? Sorry, but Sir Nog goaded for that one. That's so smart. I, and you know, I, I didn't even leave that meat on the bone on purpose. I forgot about that. Good job. Can you put Can you put Super Bowl in the listing? Why not? Yeah, I am, dude. Like a day before, I'm gonna relist it. I'm gonna relist it as Super Bowl, you know, halftime or something like that. Usher Super Bowl halftime, and I'm a I'm a I'm gonna take out some keywords, relist it there, keep it in, keep it the same as been do, and then you know, and then and then after the Super Bowl, go back and change it. So, or maybe not. Who knows? So. We'll see. Oh, um, I'm gonna talk about so yeah, Super Bowl stuff. Yeah, get that stuff listed. You know, it's the it's the right time for that. But we're I'm gonna talk about like I, I know we got a few clothing sellers out there. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about trending clothes um, and kind of like what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting a, a, a real big emphasis on just that winter closeout. Okay, jackets are still selling, boots are still selling accessories are still selling okay so all those things are are still going well but i'm not losing sight of spring is around right around the corner and that's where for for spring kind of like after christmas i slow down on one particular category and i focus in on boots and and and, and, and uh and jackets but the one thing i do slow down on is hats i don't list as many hats because i got a bunch of jackets to do so i'm not listing you know that but i will be listing hats probably once we start getting into march i'll start i'll start just like 
pumping those out, pumping those out, pumping those out. Because that's when a lot of people start thinking about hats is like that springtime. So I want I want to get ahead of that and and start listing that. And then you know think about summer stuff too. Summer stuff is is right around the corner. So whatever you're finding, you know, you know, make sure make sure we're getting that listed right right as the season is like hit like right at the like the beginning of the season because that's when a lot of people are going to go. All right, I need a new this, you know, or I need a new bathing suit to go on vacation. We're we're finally out of the cold. Hey, we're going down to we're going down to Myrtle Beach. Okay, all all, all that listen. The number one West uh, destination for West Virginian, Virginians are Myrtle Beach, believe it or not. So going down to Myrtle Beach, need a new bathing suit? Guess what? Boom. They might be looking on eBay for that. So start getting that type stuff listed and be ahead of it. The worst thing you can do is we're, we're going to be in July going, ah, maybe I should list these bathing suits. Maybe I should li- be listing these hats. Maybe I should be listing these sandals. You know, so get ahead of those trends. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'll tell you, I, I will tell you, I, I ran, I ran an experiment. This is going off. It's still kind of trending. I ran an experiment. Now y'all know I get stuff for cheap. And so sometimes I'll hoard stuff. I'll just hoard stuff. I, I'm never, I will never be that guy that's, oh man, I got a whole bunch of stuff today from the thrift. I'm going to list this all today. I'm not that guy. Okay. So I do hoard stuff. I was hoarding Two two items uh, two items for women's clothing. I was doing denim jackets. I was hoarding denim jackets, and I was de- I was hoarding fur coats. Okay, I'll tell you this: the fur coats are going ballistic. I I listed fifteen denim jackets, fifteen fur coats. I have I've sold one denim jacket. <laughs> and I have about five fur coats left. So I've mm-hmm. sold about 10 fur coats. Now I was talking to someone, and this is again going on trend, that that Housewives of Atlanta, that you know the Housewives series, they they see that, that you know, they see that 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 glam, that regency. Also, and, and also I was like, mm, this is a good one. It's like mafia wife chic. Mafia wife sheet, okay, with the fur coats. So you know that that's something that that is really taken off for me. And I and I'm I'm probably I, I have them listed anywhere from probably fifty to a hundred dollars. So the ASP on that is fantastic for me because I was picking them up for three to five dollars. Okay, that's how cheap I was getting them. But because they were like you know like fur coats, they come in at my honey hole, and people were like, I'm not buying that. And I'm like, I am, you know, so it is working. So make sure, you know, run those little, little, little experiments for yourself. Uh, you know, comment, comment down in the chat. What little experiments are you, are you running to see, you know, have you had a, have you had a situation like that where you're like, Hey, I want to, I want to see if this or this sells. I'm going to take, and, and that's what I did. And, you know, it, it's definitely, definitely paying off. So, you know, Run those, run those uh, items. See what's trending. Also, Eric said this, and Tim said this, and Leroy said this. If you're looking for what's trending, you can look for free. It's called Instagram. Okay, you know, maybe you have a family Instagram. Make yourself a, make another Instagram just for your style business, or just like. Hey, I want to see everything that's stylish or, or, you know, if I'm selling or, you know, it's not even close. Like maybe you're selling phones or something or you're selling like antique uh, dial up phone, you know, like the rotary phones. Dude, you can find all that stuff on Instagram. People will show you, Hey, I found this at the thread. I paid for this. So you can niche down really, really far down on Instagram to get, show you the content maybe you you want to look for okay i always tell that people people are like oh instagram's all that got that all that garbage on it no make it work for you okay so if you want to load it lo- log into one of your accounts and go okay today i want to see what's hot in this you know i want to see what's hot in 
vintage sports hats right now. What's what is what is you know what's hot? Go look at it. You know, vintage t-shirts, vintage jackets, uh, even even current style. I mean, you can you can you can see what I mean. You you, you can see what the new runway shows are from Paris Fashion Week, and who's getting the buzz? You know, take take a look at Rick Owens' weird you know uh, the avant garde type stuff. But again, it gets you in that trending. So just don't sit there and go, "Well, I don't know. I don't know what sells. I don't know what sells." This right here, we carry it around with us. How much? How much time do we spend wasting time versus study? Okay, that's the thing. You know, it may seem like you you know you pop Instagram and it's like boom, 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 boom. But again, you're studying. You're teaching yourself. You're learning. You're becoming knowledgeable. That's the thing. How did Leroy know all these things about tools? We can we can be like, hey, Leroy, I got this. What what what, what tool is this? And be like, yeah, that's a tongue depressor. You know, I mean, he he knows any tool out there almost. But it's because he has educated himself. Okay, he's educated himself, and and we're always learning. Mm-hmm. How many times do y'all do a deep dive into something? Go and. <laughs> All right, I got like ten items of these. Let me let me let me really go in. A, now, eight of those ten items might be like, you know what? I'm not gonna get that again. But if there's two, like, like take for cameras instance, like like old cameras. You know, you can look up. Hey, I I know nothing about old cameras, but I look them up. Boom 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 boom. All right, no no, pass 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 pass. But oh, this one right here. Oh, that one right here. So the next time I go out to the thrift. I'm knowing if that camera comes up again, pick that up. Don't even don't even say anything. Pick it up, okay? And that's how you get good thrifting. That's how you get good sourcing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're staying up with the trends. So, you know, I kind of I kind of blended it all together. But you know that that's how you you know trends work. But you have to put the you have to put the forefront knowledge into that at the beginning, knowing what to look for, knowing what to you know, because, you know, and, and here's the thing. Don't always take other people's advice, okay? Someone may go, oh, you got an ugly sweater, like that ugly, itchy sweater on? I would never wear that. That'll never sell. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll take all those. You, know, you don't want, I'll take all those and sell them for $35 a piece. So, you know, you know, do do your do your study, do your knowledge gathering, okay? And and you know, you might have a hunch on something. Take that hunch and run with it, and be like, you know what? This looks like a hundred dollar jacket. I uh, see comps around sixty bucks, but mine's in nice condition. I'm gonna take great pictures. I'm gonna put the items specific. I'm gonna put a great detailed. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on five different platforms. I'm gonna put it a hundred dollars. That's where it wins for you. So that's what's trending. Super Bowl 49ers and Chiefs, if you don't have that. But, hey, and, and and my son, I don't know. If it, I, I think it's bandwagoning. I think he's a Chiefs fan. <laughs> hey, I thought I still had a 49er. I mean, uh, Chiefs hanging out. I do. You do. It's hanging out. Get it listed. It's listed. I gotta take measurements though. Gotcha, gotcha. That's why I had so no measurement. But. I did find a Chiefs hoodie in a U size, and I bought it for my son. I was like, "There you go." I had like, a Niners yeah. and I sold it a while back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Second, too. Do you remember the? Now this is back far, and I wish I still had this. St- uh, starter for the starter satin with the huge 49ers spell out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had one back in the day. Now it was a little beat up, but I still got like a buck fifty for it. Jeez, crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, definitely be on the lookout. I mean, you never know because, like, and and I think thinking about those peripherals with all that stuff too is like even even the stuff like you know location of the Super Bowl, like all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Anytime a Super Bowl is played, like you can also go. And look at I actually had last year I sold a Super Bowl hat that weren't from the Super Bowl, 
that year, but it said Super Bowl XX whatever on there. And that thing sold around the time of the Super Bowl as well. So, I mean, there's yeah, that's a good point, too. And then you you mentioned it uh, before we started recording. Um, anything, and this is like more like immediate, but anything like related to like Super Bowl party, too, mm. um, is a really good thing to, to get up and listed, maybe even throw up on some auctions this week. Uh, that way, you know. You can like get it done and shipped before um, before the Super Bowl weekend, and also like uh, if you have anything that's already listed, make sure you delist and relist. Mm-hmm. Yep, get that, yeah. get that bomb. There you go. Hey, hey, there's old plastic football chip and dip containers. Get them on, on up. Yeah, day. yeah. You know somebody wants some of that vintage uh, vintage chip and dip. So, hey. You never know. You never know what'll sell. I've sold everything from Peeps Pepsi to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know. Nope. nope. I, I'll give you the old field of dreams if you listed it and sell eventually. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. yeah eventually. Yeah, eventually. And title, price, and pictures, folks. Uh, that'll help. Yeah. Oh, help. yeah. Hey, well, look, we want to wrap this episode up. We do appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Hopefully you have some great sales in the upcoming Super Bowl. Uh, By the time you guys see this, we'll be one week away. Um, So make sure that you get it up now, like today. If you're listening to this episode, here's your chance. Go go do a quick dive into your inventory, what you got working with, and uh, get it up. Get some sales. And, hey, drop a comment. Look, if you guys sell something that you heard it here, drop a comment. Give us a little, uh, you know, hey, thanks. <laughs> right. we, appreciate it. we appreciate hearing from you. All right, Leroy. <laughs> guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We hope that everybody... Uh, <laughs> We hope that everybody has a good weekend, and uh, don't forget to check us out on Tuesdays at uh, Listen, Listen and Loaf. And um, we we teach we teach a lot there. Um, I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to uh, cause issues, but we talk a lot about reselling. Once in a while, <laughs> we go off, but that's in our blood, guys. Um, we we're not talking about everything else. We we talk a lot about reselling. So, and that's why I love being with these guys. So just uh, continue to support us and uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Oh. We do have a food segment occasionally there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. Hey, keep on, hey, out there, keep on learning, keep on sourcing, keep on buying, keep on listing, keep on selling, okay? And keep on living. So hopefully we we've got some good. Hey, remember, just type a comment back down there. You know, hey, great show, guys. Or like, hey, you know, like you know, say say something you learned from the show, or maybe something some some cool thing that they not even have to do. Hey, we got people in our in our Tuesday chats and listen loafing. Dude, they they'll just talk into you know in the chat, and I'm like, yo, I don't even know what they're talking about, but hey, they're chatting. So say, like, hey, you want to put a cool story down there? Put a cool story down there. So, all right, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you guys. From the bottom of our heart, uh, we appreciate all the love, all the support, everything in between. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate the interaction, the comments chat you're reaching out to us we are trying to build the community not for ourselves not for you but for everybody one big happy reseller information family that's where we're going that's where we're headed there's a place where you can come to be a part of that family that place is called the one-stop shop pay us a visit there's links not just in the description below they're everywhere they're in the space of molecules 
you can find it, you can click it, and you can become part of the family. Most importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend about R I N Resell Information Network. Boop 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 boop